That's good. But today I wanted to talk to you about the connection between diet and cancer. I know a lot of people feel like cancer is just bad luck um, or genetics and that there's nothing they can do about it. And um, I wanted to talk about why that's really not the case. Only between two and 5% of cancers are actually genetic and therefore bad luck. Um, everything else is basically environment related. And everything I've seen says that diet is the biggest thing in, di in environment that you can uh, change and affect to address whether you get cancer or not. I'm gonna be sharing some information from Proteinaholic. This is by um, Garth Davis, Dr. Garth Davis. If you'd like to purchase this book, it is on our resources page of our website. So you can go, go there to rnrjourney.com, the resources page, and get this book if you're interested in getting it. Or you can also become a member and, and get some other exclusive content. And we are adding a lot of videos to uh, I'm trying to add at least one a day. Um, most of them are our daily, so you get to see a much better version of them because they're recorded on our high-def camera and then put on our website. Yeah, and that if you want access to uh, the recipes, those are also um, for members. But, so this is from, what I'm sharing with you today is from Proteinaholic, um, and I was going to try and summarize it, but it's really well written, so I'm just, some of it I'm just gonna read to you. But basically there was a study called the Food, Nutrition, Physical Activity and Prevention of Cancer, a Global Perspective. And it's um, really good because it was done supported by donations from the public and it didn't have anything to do with government or industry, like there was no bias in it. They, their goal was to just review all the relevant research and then try to provide recommendations as to how people could reduce um, their cancer based on food, nutrition, and physical activity and you know what the risks to cancer were. That sounds pretty good to me. And they, they, they found two things, very important things. First of all, the cancer rate is increasing. It's not a matter of simply better reporting or earlier detection or any of the other excuses they give. Cancer rates are actually um, increasing. And they also verified that only a very small percentage of cancer is genetic, which means that a lot of cancer is completely avoidable uh, based on lifestyle. And so these are the recommendations that they gave. The first is be as lean as possible within the normal weight range um, of body weight. So it says, and it says aim for the lower end of body mass index. We talked to you last week about body mass index. Good morning, Valerie. Good morning, Valerie. It's good to see you. Um, and that the body mass index says that normal is um, 18.5 to 24.9. And there are a lot of conversations coming out now that are saying you really need to stay under 22.5 uh, for your body mass index. And if you don't know what your body mass index is, you can absolutely Google a calculator and stick it in there. You can calculate it yourself, but it's long, hard to do it longhand. Right. Stick it in a, in a calculator and it'll, it'll kick the number right back at you. Yeah. So um, maintain your best body weight um, as lean as possible and they have seen that a plant-based diet is the best way to make to reach and maintain a low body weight. Oh, which, that's certainly no shock. Yeah, we, we tell you that. We've been saying that all along. All yeah. along, absolutely. Right. Um, be physically active every day, which means you know, move, do things. Yesterday, because it was snowing, we stayed here at home, and I spent more time sitting and just hanging out than I usually do. And my back aches today because yeah. I spent too we much time laying around and like i said i said to her yesterday we don't do sitting around very well we don't we, really we don't, don't do, do relaxing do very yeah. well we're like what's next what do we do what can we do you know absolutely um the third thing it recommends is limit the consumption of energy dense foods such as sugary foods and in other words eat foods that are lower in fat and higher in fiber and water content i.e plants mm -hmm. eat plants um, foods that are high in fat and low in fiber such as animal proteins are not recommended mm -hmm. Well, plus you're also, and we've talked about this before too, when you're eating animal proteins, you're eating everything that the animal's exposed to and eats. So all right. the chemicals are exposed to, all that stuff is in the meat that, you, that you're going to consume. All of their um, environmental stressors right. you're then consuming because you're further up the food chain. And we saw that one, um, I don't know, I think it was a documentary, well it had to be a documentary if we saw it, that uh, they showed pork, the pork industry, and how they basically... Like the, the, the pigs that had cancer, they just cut it up and put it in. That's just sell that meat, sell that meat. I they mean, could they, cut the cancer out. Yeah, yeah, and then sell that meat. So, um, th This I thought was a really strange recommendation. I, I'm not sure why it needed to be included, but it, it said um, avoid moldy food. Oh, okay. In yeah. case you didn't know. So uh, avoid, avoid things that are, um, are moldy like grains and, and legumes. So all right, fine. 
Um, eat mostly foods of plant origin. Yes, we know that. Mm -hmm. Limit the intake of red meat and avoid processed meats entirely. Now, it's interesting that because of the way these studies are done, it's hard to find people who don't eat any red meat to put into the study. So the best thing they can say is limit. And when they say limit, they say no more than two thirds of a pound per week mm -hmm. of red meat. And then it says being completely vegetarian does reduce cancer risk. Being completely vegan reduces cancer risk further, but we, because of the way the studies are conducted, we cannot rule out the possibility that the difference in these cancer effects is due to other healthy lifestyle um, issues or things. So um, limit your red meat, although it seems to me that completely reducing red meat to zero is a good idea. It's a good idea, yeah. I mean, one burger is going to put you about what they recommend for a week. Yeah. You know, you know I mean, so that, and that's the thing. Because a lot of these industries are sponsored by the government or subsidized by the government, that they produce way more than they can actually sell, sell yeah. or we can consume. So that means all these proportions become ridiculously large, you know? Right. I mean, and so we're eating so much that we're, we're that just one meal and you're, you're already exceeding what anybody would recommend you should take in like a week you're eating one meal. Yeah, absolutely. So two-thirds of a pound would be... Well, an eight-ounce um, burger is half a pound, right? Yeah. So yeah. The most burgers, that's what they don't So you're get. just about at that limit with, it, right. with just a burger, yeah. Um, limit alcoholic drinks, obviously, um, again, because it's hard to find people who are teetotalers to do, in, do these studies with. Um, it's hard to say that less is, you know, zero is better than limit, but it does say limit alcoholic drinks. The other thing to consider is when they, when they do alcohol studies, unfortunately, when they say people are teetotalers, which means they don't drink at all, they include people who are sick and don't drink because they've given themselves like cirrhosis of the liver because right. they've been drinking. And so they don't say, here are people who haven't had any drinks at all for their, you know, their lifetime mm -hmm. versus people who quit drinking six months ago because they're sick. And so mm -hmm. sometimes when they, that J curve that sometimes they say some alcohol consumption is better than, than none is because of that. They put sick people in with people who don't drink for health reasons. So this says limit. It doesn't give a, an amount as to how much it's limit means, but it just says limit alcohol. Um, limit consumption of salt, which if you're not eating processed food, you don't even really uh, have to worry yes. about. That's not really a thing. Um, doctor, is it McDougal that says you keep the salt shaker on the table? Yeah, he says so that's fine. He's, you know, and his, he's the same thing. He says it's only the salt that if you're eating processed foods or if you're going out to eat a lot, you're taking in a ton of sodium. Right. So limit that. So, But he says the salt on the table, that shaker... Should, is not really a problem because you can't really shake enough food under your salt uh, uh, enough salt, salt onto onto your food, food. Yeah. <laughs> for it to be an issue so that's what he says about that and then um meat aim to meet all of your nutritional meat needs through diet alone and what that means is avoid supplementation mm -hmm. eat the eat your nutrition in the actual plant product mm -hmm. which we talk about all the time that you should eat calorie uh, lean foods that are nutrient nutrient mm -hmm. dense yes. so you want lots of nutrient density and then it says, convincing evidence that fruits and vegetables decrease the risk of cancer of mouth, larynx, esophagus, lung, stomach, colon, rectum, breast, pancreas, bladder, liver, ovary, ovarian, and prostate. So basically, eating plants <laughs> reduces cancer across the board. And they found that people who answered mostly yes to following these recommendations were 34% less likely to die in the 12-year period of the study than those who answered mostly no. And they had a significantly lower risk of developing cancer or car coronary artery disease or heart disease. And so. the thing is, too, is they got to come up with a new name for cancers every day because there are cancers now that never existed. Right. You know, when, when, when uh, you, people were eating mostly plants. I mean, just that when, you know, how much time ago that was. But as, as Western society becomes... It's like a disease almost. It's spreading yeah. throughout the world. With, You're getting more and more diseases food, and more yeah. and more you know, illnesses. So um, that's what I wanted to share with you from this book. Again, this is from Proteinaholic by Dr. Garth Davis. It's available on our website on the resources page. And I know that a lot of people don't like hearing that cancer isn't bad luck because mm -hmm. there are so many of us that get it. And unfortunately, by the time we're diagnosed with cancer, it, I mean, yes, changing your diet at that point is gonna help. It's gonna help you fight it. It's gonna do a lot of things. But the, the, the point is cancer, avoiding cancer is by changing your diet before you have it, right. before it, you've it, been diagnosed. Make, yeah, prevention is, not, is the way to go. So not, 
sooner is better. Don't, don't wait to change your diet until you're diagnosed. Although if you've been diagnosed, absolutely change your diet. Right. Um, I'm not saying that don't bother, but I am and, saying do it sooner than later. Right. And everything you do towards a healthier lifestyle is increasing your chances of not getting cancer. So if you don't exercise at all, exercising is going to increase your chance of not getting cancer. Mm -hmm. You know, if you eat a strictly standard American diet, going to like an 80% plant-based diet or a 90% plant-based diet is going to increase your chances of not getting cancer. Absolutely. You know, and if you already got it, it's also going to increase your chances of not getting it back again. Fighting or, it. Or fighting yep. it, or, you know. Because um, remember, the medical profession does very little to cure disease. They only do things to treat disease. Now, there are exceptions, obviously, but general rule is... They treat, they don't cure. Right. So, um, but yeah, that I felt like that, this couple of pages was just really interesting, and that's why I wanted to share it with you directly and not just summarize it, but actually read you from the book because I feel like it was super important. Did you have anything else you wanted to add about that specifically? No, I did what I wanted to add. Okay. I said what I wanted to say. All right. So you guys know that our website is rnrjourney.com. You can go there for more information. Um, our articles are there and available for anyone who wants to go check them out on the articles page. You can join our newsletter so that you get those articles uh, arrive in your mailbox, in your email box on Wednesday mornings. I will be sending one out the, on Wednesday. So make sure you join our newsletter. You can also join the website for even more exclusive content where you get access to the community page, mm -hmm. where we post articles and other things and conversations and um, the recipes that I write and all that fun stuff. Yeah, and our, also our Q&A, which uh, mm -hmm. is more of a um, support group than anything else. And, and that's, that's on the 22nd That's this on month. the 22nd of this so month. You'll so you'll get access to our yeah, live so Q&A. Make sure you join up so you can have access to that. that. That should be a lot of help for people that are... And my notes and quotes. And her notes and quotes. You can't forget that. All the stuff that I write down. And when I when I read books like this and I take notes, I, we type those up and make them available to members on the website. Our web, webinar is at howtofeedahuman.com. You can absolutely go there and get even more information because mm -hmm. we have so much information available and um, get access to the master class, which will give you kind of everything. We've condensed it into a bunch of videos that you can watch on your own time. Mm -hmm. And, and as you, once you have access, you have access forever, so you can watch it whenever you want. I think that's it. I think that's it. All right. Make okay. sure you like and share. Let other people know about us. Right. And so with that, we will say eat real food, Mostly, Mostly plants. plants. Have, Have a, a good day, one. Guys. We'll see you tomorrow.